Tungiasis is prevalent on the American continent, spanning from Mexico to northern Argentina and affecting various Caribbean islands. It also extends throughout sub-Saharan Africa. Isolated cases have been reported in India and southern Italy. The ectoparasitic infestation is prevalent in underdeveloped communities in rural areas, fishing villages along coastlines, and urban slums. Much like several other parasitic diseases, the severity of tungiasis is closely associated with poverty. A study examining risk factors for intense infestations in a Brazilian fishing community revealed that poor housing is a significant independent factor. In impoverished communities across Brazil, Trinidad, and Nigeria, prevalence ranges from 16% to 54%. The prevalence of the disease is linked to the presence of sandy soils, but it can also be found in banana plantations and tropical forests. Tungiasis is widespread in Brazil, occurring from Yanomami populations in Roraima State to rural areas in Rio Grande do Sul State. Historical and anecdotal reports suggest a higher incidence of tungiasis during the dry season. Seasonal variation shows fewer cases during the rainy season and a higher incidence and prevalence during the dry season. The animal reservoir, especially domestic animals like dogs, cats, and pigs, as well as rats, plays a crucial role in transmission dynamics. In a Fortaleza slum, northeast Brazil, 67% of dogs, 50% of cats, and 59% of captured rats were found infested. Pigs and cattle in rural areas are known reservoirs for tea penetrants, although their importance seems to have diminished in recent year. Tungiasis has been observed in various host animals, including monkeys, sheep, goats, sylvatic rodents, coatis, and armadillos. The clinical presentation and natural history in animal hosts closely resemble human tungiasis. Due to the presence of diverse domestic and sylvatic animals as potential reservoirs, controlling tungiasis is challenging. Furthermore, T. penetrans eggs, larvae, and pupae can persist in the environment for extended periods, making the reduction of human and animal reservoirs lead to rapid reinfection. While surface spraying with insecticides has been suggested, there is no confirmed evidence through controlled studies, and environmental insecticide application may not be effective due to the unique biology of tea penetrants. Given the flea's preference for sandy and shaded soil, cementing house floors and paving streets could reduce attack rates. Improved sanitation and regular waste collection can contribute to reducing incidence and morbidity, but these measures are often costly and unfeasible in many communities. Health education should emphasize secondary prevention, encouraging people and caregivers to inspect their feet daily and remove embedded fleas with appropriate and sterile instruments. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, click the like button, and activate the notification bell if you wish to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.